This show is brought to you by. Egypt removing tax exemptions for public companies and oil heads for its first weekly gain in four weeks. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Egypt is planning a legislative amendment to remove preferential tax and customs exemptions given to state-owned companies and entities. Officials say Egypt aims to promote private investments and ensure fair competition. It's confirming the importance of the role of the private sector in development. The concessions granted to public sector companies have raised investors' concerns about the competitiveness of businesses in Egypt at a time when Cairo seeks to attract more investment to close the growing funding gap. Investment advisory firm Sedco Capital has successfully completed the second capital increase of its flagship Sedco Capital Rate Fund. Following the completion of the additional offering, the total asset value of the fund reached $653.35 million, positioning it as one of the largest rates on the Saudi exchange. The offering was 141% oversubscribed, with the total value of requests amounting to $228.17 million. The units will be allocated to the unit holders within 15 business days from the closing date of the additional offering period. The fund's latest capital increase follows the acquisition of Atelier La Vie, a new entertainment destination in Jeddah's Al Shati district. Oil is headed for its first weekly gain in four weeks on optimism that the U.S. will raise its debt ceiling and avoid a default. West Texas futures rose about 3% this week to $72 a barrel. But overall, oil is still down around 10% this year. High interest rates and China's slow economic recovery are hampering the demand outlook. The Fed seems split on whether to raise rates at their next meeting or pause their tightening cycle. G7 leaders say they've ensured Ukraine has the budget it needs for this year and early 2024, renewing their commitment to providing financial and military support. In a statement, the group said members are engaging with other nations to avoid the flow of their goods and technology into Russia through third countries. It's an issue that has become a bigger concern for members. The G7 wants to crack down on any circumvention of sanctions that would give Russia a revenue boost. Volkswagen has completed the sale of its Russian assets to local dealership group Avilon as part of its exit from the country. VW says the new owner will acquire all shares in the Russian subsidiaries and the deal has been approved by the Russian government authorities. The sale includes its flagship Kaluga plant southwest of Moscow. Japan's stock benchmark rallied today to its highest level since 1990, driven by positive factors ranging from strong earnings to optimism over a U.S. debt ceiling deal. The Nikkei jumped as high as 30,900 before closing the day up 0.77% at 30,800. It was its seventh straight winning session. Japan's stock rally has been powered by an overall very strong earnings season, a weaker yen, and an economy that's starting to show signs of a post-COVID consumption revival. China auto billionaire Li Shafu has built up one of the industry's largest global footprints with stakes in Volvo and Polestar, Mercedes-Benz, Lotus, Geely Auto and Link. Now, his private holding group Zhenjian Geely has boosted the Aston Martin Lagonda shares in its portfolio. It now holds 17% of Aston Martin, doubling its shares purchased last year. It paid $290 million to become the third largest shareholder after a consortium of investors led by Aston Martin chair Lawrence Stroll and Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. And staying with billionaires, let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's richest people. Our biggest loser today is Chinese e-commerce billionaire Colin Zhang Huang, down $1.7 billion with net wealth of $21.7 billion. Our second biggest loser today is Chinese battery module Robin Zhang, down $1.5 billion with net wealth of $33.9 billion. And our third place loser is French tech entrepreneur Javier Neal, down $1.3 billion, but still with net wealth of $5 billion. Point two billion. Check out our website and our social media for all the latest billionaires news. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is the Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.